Hey, what's up? It's Gabriella Marte here, and you're watching The Creatives Conversation, brought to you by Helps2. Let's get started. Now, before we even get started, I'm going to introduce my co-host today, Amber Huffman. She's our brand manager here, and I love her. She's a great dear sister of mine, friend, all the things, you know what I mean? She actually has a topic, and I'm going to let her introduce it because she came up with what she wants to talk about today, which okay. is her job, by the way. Yeah, part of my job. Just <laughs> one it. small part of my job. I love it. <laughs> well, wait, before, if you're on YouTube right now, can you just smash that subscribe button? And if you are on the podcast app, figure out a way to subscribe to us. We have so much fun content coming your way. You don't want to miss it. So, yeah. all right, I'm done. All right. Yeah, well, today we're going to be talking about how you can actually make money online through marketing. <laughs> because we actually make money online through marketing. <laughs> it is possible. It is possible. <laughs> um, and so we actually are going to primarily be talking about a specific story that happened with us at Helps Too yeah. with a client where um, – Maybe you should give the details because I might mess it up. You could go and I'll just correct it. On well, the okay. I I'll believe. Do the sure. I believe we made 70K yeah. in two or three months. Two and a half. Two and a half months for a client through online marketing. So how did that happen? Because yeah. you were leading that whole campaign. You were in charge of their advertising. You were in charge of, you know, creating content for that. So tell us how that even happened. <laughs> I feel like it was an interview. First of all, I just want to let y'all know that I was in the bathroom and I was like, like five minutes ago. And I was like, what are we talking about? She's like, oh, I'm basically going to ask you about this. <laughs> so I was like, okay, cool. I mean, I think we've talked about it enough to where it's not a shocker and I don't feel like put on the spot. <laughs> But yeah, it was this really cool experience. I was doing marketing for a nonprofit out in California, which is where I'm from originally. Now in the Midwest, Kansas City, represent. Hey. I really <laughs> love it here. Um, and I love California too, you know. Both good it's my places. my tribal land. But yeah, long story short, we're doing marketing for a nonprofit. We had been working with them for about a year, year and a half by this point. And the executive director all of a sudden decided to spring on us, mostly me, that she wanted to do an end of year campaign. And I think it was like, I don't know, October. And I was like, oh, OK, we are not ready for this. But <laughs> I was like, we really didn't have much of a choice. <laughs> she was like, we got to do this. And I was like, all right, cool. So one thing that we had in our you know, pocket, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. was that we were doing a bi-weekly video for them. I loved video before video even became king. I've right. always been fascinated by imagery. And then when I grew older, like pictures, and then when I grew older and figured out how to actually do media, I became obsessed, like actual like videos and mm -hmm. audio. Mm -hmm. I love it. Like I'm a musician. I just love it. So we had already been doing videos for them because mm -hmm. as a nonprofit, which we love nonprofits here, I think one thing you have to do is tell your story. Mm, and it's really yeah. hard, I think, to do that nowadays in 2021 with just pictures. Mm -hmm. Like, you can. You're going to write a lot. But I think one way we get stories so quickly and understand them really quickly is through video. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, watch a movie, right, about someone. like Right. I was just watching one of our older podcasts, and I was trying to find her name, Naomi Osaka. But, like, I'm watching her Netflix series. Mm -hmm. or It's only, like, three-part series or something. But... I didn't have a clue who she was right. until the series. And then I've only watched like an episode and a half. And I feel like I know her. You know what I mean? And right. So yeah. The story has been told through video. And it was only an hour and a half that I've watched so far. And that's mm. crazy how stories can really develop so quickly in our minds. Right. And we had no preconceived notion about who somebody was. Right. So back to this nonprofit. I really want to tell their story. So we had been telling their story for a year mm. every other week through video smaller videos like three minutes we would do someone's like you know like a client's story because they were housing the homeless still are i think hopefully <laughs> and we did a lot of great work with them so i hope it continues to go forth and um yeah so we we talk with clients and hear their testimonies we talk with staff we do like an overview video of like what their organization did because they had like five different parts to it a lot of organizations that like house the homeless or those dealing and affected with homelessness they feed people they give them clothes they have like 
five step programs to do X and Y and Z and all these things. Yeah. So I was so I was in Candyland. I'm like, let's tell this story. I had my drone out there. <laughs> we were flying drones oh and gosh. interviewing people. And yeah. so when this moment came, I felt like I say all that because when this moment came, I felt like we had um, like a, a whole weaponry to use. Like oh, yeah. I didn't feel like we had to start from scratch. Right. So you had so much content. Content. And we had an engaged audience mm. online. Cause like right, we're posting on social media five times a week and regardless of the fact that they had an audience on Facebook of like maybe two thousand people. Okay. That's so like decent. I feel like that's pretty decent, but like yeah. not like I mean, you can have... That's not massive. It's not crazy. No. So I felt like, you know, they have this audience of like 2,000, really had never used Instagram until we found them. Oh. We started doing that, maybe an audience on Instagram of like 150 people, 200 people. And this is us working with them for like a year, no advertising. And then um, Twitter, like, meh, it was all right. Like maybe 1,000 people on Twitter or something like that. And that had been accumulated over like 10 years or something crazy. So, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, here we are, this moment, we've been working with them for like a year and it's mm-hmm. time to do this campaign. So my mind I'm like what's the budget <laughs> as you know nobody thinks like that unless you're a marketer I feel right like. everyone's like can right. we just do this for free yeah no we can't do this for nope. free <laughs> absolutely <laughs> this not this stuff costs money man right this is <laughs> like, time you want to reach effort. people like yeah. I don't know aside from like riding your bike to the city and throwing things at people's houses like little newspapers oh like not much <laughs> else like is going to be free things. and even that yeah. I mean you probably got to pay for the pay bike for the and papers like yeah and the papers like Nothing's I just feel free. like yeah nothing's free we got to get that concept out of our minds like like, mm-hmm. you have to see it as an investment and in what is your ROI going to be, so your return on the investment. Mm-hmm. And so the first question out of my mouth is, like, what do we have to spend? And legitimately, <laughs> I just could have cried. But, like, she said – I can't even say it. It just breaks my heart. $500 <laughs> for these two months. I was dead to the world, as oh, all Gen no. Z would say. <laughs> All you Gen Zoomers out there. But um, long story short, yeah. So, but, you know, this was like the early days for Health Sue. So I was all in. I was like, all right, we're going to do this. So what we did, is that what you want, my strategy? Yeah. This is a lot of money worth of strategy right now. Okay, well, we're giving it away today. (laughs) So I hope y'all are still watching. Hope you didn't. See, that's messed up, man. (laughs) (laughs) Hope you didn't click away from the video yet. You guys, all, this is a lot of strategy. You know how much I charge someone? To sit down and have strategy conversations like this? I do know how much. And I just know that <laughs> whoever is watching, y'all better watch to the end. Take because notes. this is free money right it here. It is. Because, you know, I feel like the one thing about being in the marketing realm that I've started to realize maybe in the last three years or so, being someone that is great at strategy and, like, a lead strategist. Right. I would say, and director and all the things, but, like, you really have to understand. It's, it's, okay, so here, let's back up. Okay. I think people think of marketing like just go find something mm-hmm. and just do it like everybody else does it. It'll be great. Yeah, And that's like saying when you have the flu, hey, just go find some pills, take them, right. and you'll be all right. Yeah, Like you really have to diagnose what your problem is, who right. your audience is, and then from your knowledge and probably past experience. A lot mm-hmm. of us marketers are really leaning on our past experience mm-hmm. and knowledge of how everything works together. And it's not just platforms. It's like, how does a certain type of creative work on a platform? Mm-hmm. All right, you want to use YouTube? Well, what works on YouTube? Right. What works for you on YouTube? Right. And so I think just like a doctor would look at someone who is sick and, and need, a lot of people who need marketing, there's a need, right? Mm-hmm. Um you they would diagnose you based on your past history right your yeah. health history mm-hmm. they would diagnose you based on your body weight mm-hmm. um based on your environment maybe yeah. even yeah. and so i think the same is true in marketing and that's why i really love it because mm-hmm. i get to take all this skill and all these all these years <laughs> and studying i'm a nerd like i just read like during the day if i'm doing mindless tasks to get things done or replying to emails i'm i'm listening to someone <laughs> yeah. tell me about the next best strategy like this is my life so anyways i'll let i digress to say <laughs> that uh, this is 
great because I'm going to give nonprofits and people who have a cause, not so much the person that's trying to make a million dollars off of, right. you know, a for-profit company. It could right. work. This could work for you. I think this is pretty general. Sure. This could work for most people who are watching, um, especially creatives, because most creatives have a cause. Oh, yeah. So the creatives conversation, here we are. <laughs> so let me jump into it, okay? So we had two and a half months to, like, be done with this. Mm-hmm. It was um, what was really cool about it, in all transparency, it was a matching campaign. So we had partnered with an organization who said, if you raise uh, after the $10,000 mark, we'll match everything. Yeah. Wow. So I think, I think that is it. Yeah. It's been a long time, but something like that. Or maybe it was like up to $10,000 will match or something like that. So long story short, that was a great benefit. That Mm -hmm. was a good push. And that's why we were being pushed to do this. And so we... How we started is we kind of made a strategy, of course, right? You can't just right. willy-nilly it and expect it to be great. It could happen, but it <laughs> probably won't. Not like <laughs> Yeah, like we're just like, slim. <laughs> um, so long story short, we did a strategy. We knew, so what, two and a half months is like what? Like 10 weeks, four, four months in a... Yeah, in ten, a, ten weeks. Four months, four weeks in a month yes. times two. <laughs> Math. Plus, yeah, yeah, divided by a month. So that's about... 10 weeks. weeks. Okay. (laughs) So over the 10 weeks, we knew that we wanted to use uh, certain avenues based on how, how engaged their audience was on those avenues or Mm -hmm. in those avenues. So first avenue we knew we wanted to use was email. Mm. I mean, nonprofits, a beautiful thing about them is, I mean, maybe like even 10 years ago, like their bread and butter was email. Oh yeah. Like before social media really became like the way, Mm -hmm. um, 15 years ago, it was, uh, newsletters. Newsletters. Yeah. No, not even paper newsletters. Yeah. Like quarterly newsletters. Yeah. (laughs) My mom still gets some from some places she's donated to. Yeah. Yeah, All the nonprofits I've worked with and still do work with, they Uh definitely still do the quarterly. Yeah. We're sending it out. And I'm like, it's like almost a tradition because you have the boomers who are like low key, please forgive me. But like (laughs) on their way out, like it's life. We all just cycle through. <laughs> That'll be someone Cricket my sounds. age saying that about me in like eight, 40 years. You know, like, all right. <laughs> it's just a God part. I know, I know. But, you know, uh, generations must come and they must go. <laughs> Sorry. It's so that morbid. was so offensive. Weren't you talking just, about like the fours on the Enneagram? How oh, we yeah. talk about death all We're the time? We're so casual and nonchalant about, about death. death. Like, I'll just be like, yeah, I'm going to die one day. It's going to be fine. Like, <laughs> Don't bother me at all. I'm totally accepting of it. On the Instagram. And I feel like I think about death all the time. Yeah, it's me too. the weirdest thing. Me too. I and plan I've, like there's this joke about fours that we plan our funerals more than we plan like our weddings. <laughs> like I know exactly how I want my funeral to look. I know exactly how I want to die, but like That's funny. You what? Know what? <laughs> you know how you want to die? Yeah, I'm not gonna No, no. That's so weird because somebody I'm might curious. try to make it come true. Oh, and I, that's gosh. so weird. I just always felt like it would be a quick death for me. Like, I just don't think I'm going to, like, die slowly. That's fair. Growing up, I would think that I was, I felt like I was called to, like, really make a big difference. And I'm seeing that that might not be, like, activism, like, you know, like MLK kind of activism. Mm. But it might be, like, more like Mother Teresa activism. Yeah. (laughs) My mind has changed as I get older. But, like, because I thought it would be, there was only one kind of activism, I always thought I'd get, like, without a doubt, like, yeah, someone would just kill me. So. I'm just going to leave it right there. Ooh, but, that's kind of dark. But I thought it would be quick, like yeah, like I sniper guess. kind of stuff. God forbid. Oh, gosh. I'm really at <laughs> peace with death. Like, I just pray no one kills me. But, yeah. like, you know, well, as the you're Lord saying knows that you... my numbered days, and I'm cool with that. I'm so, mean, anyways, I'm on mean. to how the boomers are going <sighs> now. I'm just glad I can always reconnect after a tangent like that down a bunny hole. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> boomers, they that's their thing. You know what I mean? Like, newsletters, like, actual yeah. newsletters, like, tangible, Absolutely. physical. I read it um, mm-hmm. in my living room. And then you have, you know, this new era of digital. So, like, mm-hmm. we knew that we wanted to kind of land in the middle there and do an e-news letter mm-hmm. campaign. <laughs> so, we were going to really do a, one newsletter a week. Wow. Yeah. That's and then at the frequent. end of, yeah, it is because we're doing one a month for them. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to rev it up to one a week. Um, okay. One, the first one being the introduction and then um, different ones in between, like being stories to like really storytell. Yeah. Um, compel people to want to give. And then, um, you know, towards the end, we would do like maybe like the last week, we'd do like two. Or three newsletters. Oh, so okay. we kind of went crazy. So yeah, um, it just kept sense. building up. To, yeah, like hey, yeah. you have three more days to give. Mm-hmm. Two more days. One more Definitely. day. Don't miss it because people they thrive on yeah. urgency. It's like our oh culture. yeah. So that is that. Um, 
so the newsletters were a huge thing. Mm-hmm. We also built an infrastructure on their website, which a lot of people mm-hmm. don't even think about these things, but I do. Yeah, I'm like super definitely. like revenue uh, model minded. And so I'm like, man, people are going to give, but like, what if you could make a way for them to sign up once and give every month? Just reoccurring. Reoccurring yeah. donations that they weren't even thinking about. And so that was really cool because at the end of the campaign, we had set that up on their website and a lot of people... They'll give twenty dollars a month and not even think about it. That's not huge for a lot of people coming right, out of bank accounts. Right. Like, yeah. I mean, I don't even remember the last time I saw Netflix's, you know, thing on my bank account, which is my own fault. You're just I so be used to it. Budgeting, yeah. yeah. I haven't even looked. I mean, I'm not proud about that, but like, you know, yeah. that's a lot of us. So, um, <laughs> knowing that that is true, we did that. And um, at the end of this two month, two and a half month campaign, we had five hundred dollars in recurring giving. Wow, that that's awesome. And then we do that's the math on month. that. Yeah. 500 times 12 is like really crazy. But like that was just like the beginning momentum. For yeah. Them. You know what I mean? They, they wow. didn't have anything recurring. Uh huh. That's crazy to me. Yeah. Like you're really just kind of willy nilly it as a nonprofit. Like God bless them. But like you're just guessing and hoping and praying, right? That like so and so's job money will be there. Right. Like you need something recurring. Like you can make nothing is for sure, right? Nothing's promised. But sure. like, you know, recurring income is like this hope of like okay like so-and-so's income will be there to have them hired next month so it's a great thing to to have so that you can make great decisions that are really big absolutely so instead of guessing and just hoping or like hoping you'll get a grant which one of the uh nonprofits here in kansas city that i helped (laughs) they were hoping that they'd get like a four million dollar grant and it didn't happen. Oh, shoot. Yeah. You can't rely on those things. You yeah. know what I mean? And so, because someone didn't do it right or whatever. You could blame whoever you want, but you still didn't right. get it. You know what I mean? So, right. like, it just yeah. didn't happen. It just, it is what so it you is. Have, you can't rely on that alone. No. You yeah. can't. You gotta you have can't. strategies Look at me, just, in place. I feel like I'm outing everyone's. Like, I know, right? What is this? No, we're not show? naming anyone. <laughs> <laughs> no I'm not. Names. I'm like, oh, God. But all like, these yeah, no names. I guess, yeah, you can't get in trouble if you don't say someone's name, right? Like, what are you going to say? Technically, no. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, back to the story. Back to we were um so we did the e-newsletter campaign we set up that infrastructure and then um we started posting we were already kind of posting consistently on yeah. social media but every other post was now about the campaign okay. in a very creative way Good. so it wasn't like donate today like, <laughs> was like people will unfollow you so <laughs> fast in the next post donate today skip a post next post <laughs> Donate today. Like, <laughs> you want your followers to be like, okay, I'm out. <laughs> People really do that, though. I've that's seen what, it. That's what's so I've funny to it. me. You're like, you, you guys, I just, I feel like we think people don't do stuff like that. Mm. And then, like, I'm always, like, shook when I see someone that I really trust it, like, on the internet. Mm. And they're doing that. that I'm like, oh, stuff. God. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, no, but but at the same time, like, that is too simple of posting. But at the same time, like, just having repetition and redundancy is helpful because what is it? You have to see – the average person has to see something 14 times? 16. 16 times before they make a purchasing decision. Where did you learn that? I don't know. It's just some (laughs) smart lady that I know. I bought everyone that helps see the same book uh, (laughs) most recently called uh, Guerrilla Marketing. Yes. I think it's, like, Mr. Levinson. Yeah. Um, Yeah, finally got his name. Jay Conrad. Conrad Levinson. Oh my God! I always say David. I don't know why. We maybe have, I'm no. I thought David, David too. <laughs> <laughs> I thought David too. But Levinson. yeah, I think we've like mentioned him maybe like six times. Oh yeah, since we started. He should this podcast. sponsor us. Listen, Jay, wherever you're at. <laughs> He's we, we're, that man was just so genius. He oh was yeah, before his time. Yeah, I'm basically doing what he's doing, or he did in the book, but automated. Yes, it's like you took it and you digitized it. Yeah, I like Jay. Jay, we love you, man. We don't even know you. Yeah, we don't. We love you for what we know. That's it. (laughs) Yep. Claim the rest. All right. Uh, Call us one day, you know. I know, right? (laughs) We should send this to him. Okay, cool. So long story short. So, um, yeah, the 16 times. So we were already posting on social media, Mm -hmm. and every other post became about the campaign. We were very strategic to be creative, right? Like, Mm -hmm. here's Johnny, right? Like, this is an example. Here's Johnny. Um, This is his story. Mm -hmm. We couldn't do this without you. Oh, and let me back up. For this campaign, it wasn't just general. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, we're just raising money. It's the end of the year. Like like some of us do. Yeah. It was like, no, we're raising money to – keep open the first public restroom in this city there are no other public restrooms for homeless people to for use. anyone to wow. use you have to buy something technically like unless a, a gas station um cashier is like sure you can use it like but you can't just walk up to it and use it 
Right. There's no other. This was the only one. Wow. And so for people dealing with homelessness, there really was no other place to go. With yeah. showers, like a few showers. Right. It was really a cool setup. And with um, people who would were like surveillancing, I guess, like constantly there yeah. to like make sure people were protected. Yeah. Because it's also really scary as a woman to be at a public restroom in the late hours of the night because you have to use the restroom. Right. Which, I mean, we all, like, a lot of us, not we all, I can't say we all, but, like, there's a lot of us who have that luxury, right? Like, mm-hmm. you drank too much water the night before and, you know, you got to go pee at 2 a.m. and you have a restroom right outside yeah. your, your bedroom. Right. Like, or right in your bedroom. So, yeah, so that was the cause. Like, hey, like, if we do not get this funding, mm-hmm. and I knew, right, when we started the campaign, if we did not have something compelling – People were like, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, so we really did have this compelling thing. So, okay, so we did the, the e-newsletter strategy. We made sure we had the infrastructure, a compelling um, reason for people to give, mm-hmm. especially if this is their community. We targeted the community, the surrounding community right. of this uh, nonprofit. And then um, we started doing the social media posts, every other post, and it would be like, here's Johnny, here's his story. Um, help us keep restrooms open for people like him today. Like, yeah. So people could see faces and put them yeah, with the cause. Definitely. Super cool. We also did one video <laughs> per week. And uh, that was huge for us. That's a lot of videos. Yeah, it is a lot we of videos. We do that now, but this was a few years ago. Yeah. Like now for us, we're used to that. You know, the podcast, We this comes out every single week. But we had created the videos already. That was what I said. We kind of had a leg up and right. like a ton of ammunition because we had like a year's worth of biweekly videos. Oh, okay. So now we just resurfaced them. A yeah. lot of people hadn't seen them. Yeah. And then we started, well, let me back up. We had those videos to use. So we put one of those mm-hmm. out again mm-hmm. every week. But we also had a campaign video mm. that we created for them, mm. which really was specific to the campaign. That's awesome. It talked about the whole restroom issue how there were none other in this city, and it was huge for people who were dealing with economic losses or hardships and are dealing with homelessness. So, um, yeah, long story short, we did that, and we promoted, I think half the budget went to promoting that video. Mm. Um, We promoted it on YouTube. (laughs) The budget, $250. Uh. Yeah, we promoted it on YouTube, (laughs) budget. um, Facebook, and um, naturally Facebook also promotes to Instagram. So. Um, we did that, and then we would promote different posts throughout the campaign, like mm-hmm. pictures and whatever with the other dollars, mm-hmm. like 25 to $50. So that's what we would do, and to our surprise, it just kind of like, I don't want to say viral because that's like a, a big major statement, <laughs> but like it really just blew up for the city, yeah. and people were like, whoa, this is crazy. So we ended up um, ending the campaign having raised $70,000. Yeah. Wow. Which was cool. Yeah. Which was really, really cool. So, (laughs) yeah, it was probably, like, one of our first success stories, something that was, like, you're kind of, like, what just happened? Like, Mm -hmm. it felt like just time went by, and you're, like, we looked up, and you're, like, oh, crap. Like, this really happened. It really, yeah. Yeah, $70,000 to keep that thing open. I'm not sure how they used it. Not my business. But, like, um, it was just... I just I don't even get into the politics of nonprofits because I feel like you can really lose like all your heart and all your love to want to help people. Yeah. So I don't know how they use it. So I do kind of just don't want to know. Like to be honest, because I don't want to like kill my love for helping right companies help others. Like helps to helps people help right. others, and so I don't want to kill my love. Like sometimes I am curious. I just I get scared, you know. <laughs> I don't know how they use this, yeah. but we did raise it for people who were dealing with homelessness mm-hmm. and needed a public restroom. Yeah, and absolutely. That was it. Yeah. 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 Wow, that was a lot of strategy for making money online. Yeah, it was. So it if, was. if we had to condense it, I guess the first thing that you said was just like, you know, growing audience through consistent social media. Yeah. You said the baseline was you already had an audience that was engaged that was engaged and yeah. that is through consistent posting and felt like they were getting value yeah. from us for like a year at least yeah. yeah so you know if you want to start making money online it may not happen immediately especially if you don't already have an online community that's engaged that's you know seeing what you're posting so yeah i think the first thing would be posting consistently even without expecting monetization right away yeah i think so i think no matter who you are business um a stay-at-home mom, mm-hmm. a nonprofit, mm-hmm. creative. 
I think where a lot of people miss it is they start asking either too soon or they just have no relationship with their audience. And I think Mm -hmm. social media is so personable nowadays. And Mm -hmm. I think the algorithms even have started to really hone down on this. But like, if you, if people don't really know you, why would they want to give to you? Yeah. You know? And so, so or why would they want to buy your album? You know what I (laughs) mean? Like, it's just a hard reality. And, um, one thing I've always loved is media. So like naturally I'm always doing it. Like it's so fun to me, but like, especially for my own music, people are like, you're nonstop Marte. (laughs) And I'm like, well, I mean, I I love this stuff, you know, Mm -hmm. but I would say, it's not about always posting personal posts. That's not what I'm saying. We sure. don't even know about your dog and what you ate for dinner and all this stuff. But like, we would like to know like about you some like something. Yeah, you know what I mean like yeah. so be a typical too. Yeah, like I mean helps to post. You see us. You see our faces. Absolutely. We joke a little bit. We mm-hmm. we give value. And same with my music post as Marte the musician. You know, you see a lot of music for sure. And that's something I had to change. I realized, oh, I'm not doing enough music on here. Mm. Like, I'm a musician. Like, yeah. I should be doing music naturally. Right. Like, music, I post about my friends, um, you know, that I hang out with that also do music. Like, just, mm-hmm. you know, um, I'm doing this today. People want to know you a little bit more when you're, like, an influencer of sorts. Yeah. I don't necessarily, that's my imposter syndrome. I mean, influencer is a strong word. <laughs> I don't necessarily use that for myself. But, yeah, yeah you know, when you're doing something solo. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you need to really uh, – prime and like give to your audience before you start asking i don't know what that timeline looks like for right it's different for everybody right exactly but yeah just being real and being you know personable to your audience and engaging with them back you know actually like replying to comments and messages and like you know being like engaged and being social on social media (laughs) yeah (laughs) almost like that's what it was made for (laughs) yeah who knew um but yeah and then i heard like you talked a lot about video yeah so just being you know up with the times with video even if it's not you know 12 minute long youtube videos even if it's like you know a five minute video Mm -hmm. or you know depending on what you do if if you're a musician post your music videos post your cover videos if you're an artist post like a what are those things called like a time lapse of you creating something you know like even if you're just on tiktok or reels you know the really short ones where you're posting 10 second of 20 30 second videos like be engaged with video because that's where the audience is now that's where people are that's what people are looking for they're not looking to read a bunch of you know long posts necessarily sometimes you know but yeah, no people do read i think absolutely. but it starts with being engaged with a yeah, video and absolutely. then they read it yeah yeah it's not opposite definitely um and then I well yeah say- let's go back to video it really doesn't have to be hard like right it can be simple i think what's crazy is like You know, Andre and I have done our professional videos for my music, and they've been incredible. (laughs) Yeah. But then I do a video of me, no joke, in a fleece polo, like, (laughs) at my kitchen table, black and white, in a ball cap, singing a song I just made up, and it goes, like, wild. Yeah. Ridiculous. Like, I just can't. You know, like, (sighs) I try so hard to give value to y'all. I'm just kidding. (laughs) And you just, like, show me that it doesn't, that you don't care. No, it... (laughs) It does matter because I feel like you look more credible because you actually have professional, professionally made and mix mastered music videos. But also like people want the raw stuff too, you know? People want to see just how you are, who you are as a person. Like this is me on a Sunday night just like playing around on my guitar, you know? Like I'm just kidding. But yeah, I mean some of my most popular videos are with you holding the camera she's so brutal about me <laughs> holding the camera as if it was so terrible no it was it great was so to me it was great but terrible. i love watching the comments like somebody was like i'm gonna get sick from this video i was like that's that's cold that's messed but up trifling out here well i'm not you know i don't have all the gear that andre has i don't no have the years of experience that andre has i will never pretend to compare to andre but, you know, we were out there. We were making videos. Giggling. So I know. He's enjoying <laughs> this. Gassing him up. Um, uh, no. But, yeah, I just wanted to say that because I don't think it has to be. Yeah. It doesn't have to be nowadays, professional which, every time. Yeah. Which kills me. But, like, that's just what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah. People enjoy what they enjoy, you know? It's, Even yeah, if it's, it's simple. The random TikTok videos. Oh, somebody yeah. Somebody throwing a shoe and then ending up in a different outfit. That oh, people yeah. go crazy for. That type of stuff. I don't Yeah. I don't <laughs> people love it yeah it's crazy to it. me and I, to be honest i love it it's weird i'm That's mad at funny. it but i like it mad, it's like but yeah yeah no it's true yeah so yeah having your audience being engaged with them 
creating video content. Yeah. And I would say the third thing would be having an easy way to give because you talked about the setup on the website. Yeah. So, you know, if you are trying to raise money for something more specifically or, you know, whatever you're doing, if you're an artist and you're raising money for an album, like having a way to give that's not like complicated, that's like just simple, easy to use, you know, whatever you come up with. Like, make sure it's accessible, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Don't make people give you all their, like, I don't know, like, don't make it hard for them. Don't make them yeah, jump like, through Yeah, like, don't send them to a link and then send them to another page exactly. and then to another page. By then, it's, it's They're a gone. Wrap. Yeah. <laughs> they just, gave up. It just needs to be, like, the link they click needs to be the page they give on. Exactly. Like, for real. Exactly. And there's so many even different sites that they yeah, can get through. Even if it's simply, like, a Kickstarter, a GoFundMe, like, whatever it is, just make it simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Yeah. Or like your own website. You can do your own website, yeah. but like yeah. just make it simple. Not everyone knows how to do their own website. So if you don't, There's hit us up. There's a few of you out there. I can <laughs> just smell it from There's back here. some web designers out There's there. There's some of y'all that have designed your whole brand. Oh, yeah, I bet. But you're scared of doing this next thing I'm going to mention. Oh. You're scared of asking more than once. Mm. You know what I mean? I mm-hmm. think that's the thing. You do have to see it 16 times for most people to even want to do anything. Mm-hmm. You know, whether that's a negative or positive reaction. Most people would react positively, to right. be honest. Yeah. You'll be surprised. People want to know what, what you're doing. Ask Ask multiple times. I think there needs to be a lot of direct ask within a fundraising yeah. or money making campaign. Mm-hmm. But like, there just needs to be creative ways to say to point back to the campaign. Like, mm-hmm. hey, I'm doing these paintings for this campaign. Hey, I sang this video and I'm gonna do this or this song and then I'm gonna do this other song for this campaign or like mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, just really like constantly keeping it before people's eyes. Oh like, yeah, that's what people do to us anyway. It's like all these commercials you see. Why can you sing the jingle because you've seen it twelve right. million times? Mm-hmm. And so you have to do the same thing. But in a yeah. creative way that doesn't feel overbearing. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's easier than you think. You just have to be creative. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, any other, were there any other takeaways from your whole story? No, I think finding money, my mom used to say this growing up, and I'd be like, yeah, right, <laughs> is really easier than you think. But mm. like a lot of us don't want to humble ourselves mm. to do those things. And I'm not talking about like ir- immoral things, like, yeah, you know, asking <laughs> is sometimes the, the very thing people don't want to do. Exactly. And it's the very thing you need to do mm-hmm. to get to where you need to go. And so and it's not always money. Sometimes it's help yeah. for help or like to partner with someone. I think you really got to start asking. I, I listened to this podcast one time. I forget who it was. But he said, and I think this is in the book um, that we wrote. We don't need another marketing book. But the person said that they would naturally go to Starbucks and ask for a refill after they had bought their coffee knowing that it wasn't a thing right. to practice rejection, like being rejected. Yeah. Because we're to so fragile. Being told we're no. so like, yeah. oh, I don't want to be told no. Yeah, nobody does. But like, <laughs> once you get told no 150 times, you're past it. Right. Like, it's so like normal to you. Definitely. And so you just ask and you know the person could say no. And you're mm-hmm. just like, yeah. Like last night I, I or yesterday, I flexed my rejection muscle. And I asked a friend if I could bring you and my boyfriend over. And even though they had only originally invited me, and I know that's like taboo, <laughs> like my mom would kill me. But you know, I did it anyways. I'm like, yeah, just bring him over. Right. I was like, the only thing that could happen is they say no. I wouldn't feel awkward because I just choose not to feel awkward. Like, I don't need to feel awkward. I'm, right. Just ask a question. They said no. Yeah. I'm exactly. over it. Like, I'm here. It's fine. Let's it doesn't eat. mean they hate you. <laughs> no. Yeah. So I think we just gotta like really get better. Even me, I'm speaking a great game here, but I gotta mm. do it too. Better at asking for what we want. Yeah. And then putting our hand to the plow and like actually working for it. Yeah. Like I know a lot of us work hard, especially as creatives, but a lot of us really shy away from the one thing we want. And we don't go after it. I think it's fear. Yeah. It's fear. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Fear. But then you got to like the fear of not having it should like really be more of a fear. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Than the fear of. Doing it doing and it, it succeeds. Yeah, like, I'm confused. Yeah, <laughs> success is. That's scary. where I, I lose myself. I'm like, I don't know yeah. why we're dealing with this. But right, yeah. no, it's real. Yeah, so that's it. I think. Yeah. You have anything you want to say? No, that was it. You hit it all. Cool. I know that was a like a lot of good, strategy. a lot of info. But mm-hmm. yeah, I think just keep plowing for all of y'all out there who are like, I have a strategy and it's just not working. Just keep learning. Mm-hmm. Keep opening your mind to strategy. What could work for you and no joke and say your prayers because God will drop strategy in your lap Mm -hmm. if you're open to it. Mm -hmm. I think you'll be fine. Like you will find the way that works for you. I know we have banged our heads up against walls here. (laughs) It helps too. trying to figure out what strategies for us. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, and they've watched me, um, everyone who works here just like 
bang my head up against the wall constantly as the owner and the director. Like, what is it? <laughs> Will this thing work? Will this work? Right. And I know Grace for sure. <laughs> Our content supervisor. She's been with us the longest. She's just like, yeah, I'm so used to this. Gabby has a new <laughs> idea. Like, I'm just not going to say anything. <laughs> She's so sweet to me. She's just yeah. like, I'm just going to listen and then she'll work it out and come back. Yeah. Tell us if it works or not. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah just keep and if you are struggling, you know, I have a good book recommendation for you. It's called <laughs> We Don't Need Another Marketing Book by the <laughs> Helps <laughs> 2 Team. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm so done. That video came out today. <laughs> uh, or yesterday, I guess. I did that in a, another video. Yeah. I had to go find it. So crazy. But, um, yeah, our book actually has a lot of strategy in it as well. That could really help you even just change your mindset. You know, a lot yeah. of times it starts with mindset. Yeah. So... Yeah, definitely check it out. Um, link below for if you're watching on the video. If not, we don't need another marketing book.com. Yeah. So there's a whole website. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Dang. Look at us. I know. Well, thank you guys for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe. Stay connected. If you want some more resources, our website is littered with them, full of mm -hmm. them. Helps two.com, helps two media.com. Go check it out and we will see you guys in our next podcast. Check Bye. you later. Bye.